praise the Lord. You are giving me a hallelujah that sounds like an adult hallelujah. Apologies to the adults around. Let's shout it like young people. Do you understand? Do you understand? You know that most times you get the young people in the stadiums. I can imagine if we had more adults in the stadium. The shout would be like, Is a go. But because you have young people, even from a far away distance, you know something is happening. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. More like it. More like it. All right. So, officially, the Sunday worship service is over. It's time for the other part of the program. And today we're having a talk show, a discussion. We're laying focus on how we as young people can survive in our current time. There's a conflict. A conflict between parents and children. There's a conflict. A conflict between good and bad. There's a conflict. A conflict between being poor as a young person and driving the latest car as a young person. Very recently, I saw on social media, on Facebook, the story of a young man who said he had a short time to live but had millions of naira to spend. Who saw that news? God bless you. I'm not alone. And he was begging. He was begging for help. What happened? He went somewhere because he needed quick money. And they told him, I'll give you quick money. I'll make you rich. I'll make you wealthy. But the condition is, when you get to this particular age, you're going to die. So imagine you go at age 16 because you want to make money. You want to drive the latest car. You want to roll with the big boys and the big girls. And then you say, make me rich. And they give you that request. But say... You have seven years to enjoy all the money. And after seven years, you're going to die. But you will make mad money. So much that people will worship you. How many of you would want to do that? So it means that 16 plus 7 is what? 23. Thank you. At 23, young man is crying for help because he knows he's surely going to die. So of what use is all that? But then on the other hand, you ask yourself, is this what daddy and mommy taught him or her? The answer is no. No parent would want his child or her child to die at the age of what? 23. So is it worth it? And that is why the theme for this program is living righteously amidst the perverseness of the current age. Young people are now sacrificing their fellow friends Recently, there was a young boy who sacrificed his girlfriend for ritual. These people were less than 20. You would expect that the person that would love you the most would be your boyfriend. True or false? Hello. After all, before he became your boyfriend or your girlfriend, he must have said, Babe, I love you. You're the apple of my eyes. Sugar in my tea. Mosquito in my net. All those crazy things. I will die for you. I will take a bullet for you. I will jump off the train for you. But the same person who said that is the same person who killed the girl, who cut off her neck. There's so much trouble in the world, and young people are affected. Okay, so today we'll be having two sessions. The first one will be a time where we get to listen to some of our resource persons here today, while the second will be when we'll get to ask them questions, engage them, so we know why is there a conflict between what we want today as young people and what our parents tell us. And so they'll be giving us different topics. Please, as I welcome my guest, I would love you to appreciate them when they come up to take their seats. Are we together? Are we together? 
Some might be familiar, but I'll talk about that. Some may not be familiar, I'll still talk about that. Help me welcome my first and our first resource person this morning. Uh, it's an honor to welcome our pastor, our center leader, a group coordinator. Of course, he oversees this whole center like that. Thank you very much. He's our father. You're welcome, sir. Pastor Gabriel Akpetsi. He is somebody who has the heart of youth. And trust me, I've sat under his tutelage, his preaching. I always love to listen to him. Always. Always. Because he speaks not like an adult. He speaks with the heart of youth. I wonder why they made him an adult pastor. You're welcome, sir. Our second guest today is... Our mother, someone you're also familiar with, but of course, someone who is passionate about young people. She's the Plateau State Youth Sisters Coordinator of the Deeper Life Bible Church. Our mother, Sister Towing. She's our mommy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I love what you're doing. You're welcome, ma'am. She is also somebody who is a teacher. It means she works with young people. She is not just an ordinary teacher, but a godly teacher. And she's passionate about youths too. Our final guest today, or final resource person here today, is someone, well, maybe not familiar to you. He's actually a pastor, a pastor with the Living Faith Church. And uh, he's somebody with the heart of young people. He runs an organization for young people. He, he is a member of the Association of Christian Schools International with overall headquarters in Colorado, USA, and headquarters here in Lagos, Nigeria. He is he's a prayer secretary there, and he is into training of youths. He is the chaplain of Omega High School, secondary school, which tells you he actually interacts with young people. Help me welcome Pastor Mike. Pastor Mike. Okay, so you know it's going to be high powered, right? Right? If it was a Nigerian movie, we'd say, watch out for part two. But we've not even started part one. Right. I'm going to be your anchor this morning. I'm Onyike Abraham Onyike. And in the next few minutes, I need you to pick up your pen, write down. There will be room for questions. It's very free to ask questions. This is meant to be an interaction. It's meant to be a place where you pour out whatever you're feeling and let us address that today. I wouldn't want to hear you or see you on Facebook telling me, help me, I have four years to live, but I have 30 billion naira. And definitely you know that that kind of money is not sweet. True or false? True or false? Okay, this one before I invite our first, our first resource person. I was interacting with one of our mothers who traveled from the east and came back recently and then she said that while they were traveling back to Jos, somewhere in the east they came across a particular stream and there were youths, young boys that lined up and were entering the stream. This just happened last week, last week. They were entering the stream and she asked the question what is happening they say ah this is what happens here parents even support it that their children should go and make money for them they send them to ghana and what is it about ghana so they can go do some ritual and make money well, that type, they don't sacrifice the parents, maybe. But you know that some, some sacrifice their parents. So you know. So when they're talking to, they don't say, hey, they're talking to my father. 
learn also as a future parent. Can you hear me? Otherwise, tomorrow your child will sacri. I didn't say that because it will not happen. It will not happen. Give me an amen. I said it will not happen. Very good. And then she said that some of these parents even encourage these young money. The young men are giving condition that you may not enjoy this money. You will die anytime. But they don't mind daughters getting the money. Even if the money will disappear, as soon as they make the money, let them use the money to do all the good things for them. So if they die, let them die. What is mentality? Trust me, that that money, even if you take that money, if you handle that money, and so there's a constant Children are fighting their parents. Parents are fighting their children. In fact, both parents and children are confused. Parents are saying, leave me alone. Children are saying, we are, that's why we are here to talk about it this morning. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Of course, in the first session, we had our state youth pastor join us, the person who took the message, Sunday and Madagu. He's still here with us in the second session, so he's up there. Let's also appreciate our pastor, our state youth pastor, Pastor Sunday and Madagu. Okay, I would like to invite the first speaker for today, for this session, our pastor, our father, Pastor Gabriel Akbesi. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. Uh, praise the Lord. Uh, hallelujah is so weak. You are youths, right? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah will be part of your life in Jesus' name. Let's just have a word of prayer. Father Lord, we want to thank you for the love of these of our young boys and girls who are starting life. And thank you, Lord, that they are growing in your grace, in your presence. Thank you for the message we just listened on how to conquer through prayers. That's one of the armor they need. And now we want to look into something very deep in the world today and the Christendom. Lead us by your spirit. Let your word abide in our heart. Holy Ghost, give us direction. In Jesus' name we pray. Another is uh, let me open our Bible to the book of Colossians chapter 3 verse 20. Colossians chapter 3 verse 20. Short verse. Children, obey your parents in all things. For this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Well pleasing unto the Lord. Obey your parents. Do you know why you have to obey your parents? Number one, they are more experienced than you are. Am I right? Someone said that. What an old man we see lying down. A young man, even if he climbed 10 story building, he or she will not see it. Praise the Lord. Why do you need to obey your parents? Number two, you are the pride of your parents. Have you heard parents talking about their children? Oh, my children so so and so. My child so so and so. And they are happy. You are their joy. Therefore, they want the best for you. You will give them joy. I've had parents dying because of the misbehavior of their children. You will not give your parents heartache. That's why you should obey them. Number three is that whatsoever a man soweth, what will happen? That also he will reap. This one has no change. This one don't have to do with Bible or anything. Anything you sow, wait for it. 
That seed will grow and you will reap it. I remember a man, those days I was young. He had issue with the mother. He was calling the mother winch. He raised up his hand and slapped the mother. The mother who had her breast. If this is the breast you suck as you slap me, that's how your children will beat you. With the man repeat. I knew a lady. She gave birth. She was very wayward. And then she took in with her husband. And she went to the hospital. She delivered. When they were coming back, the mother carried the baby. I was there. My wife now greeted. I said, ah, Mama, welcome. May I ask Samu? Ah, Samu, me Rama. Those who are here, sir, do you know what that means? Yes. Uh, we have got it, the word that we pay back. Because the baby girl, whatsoever a man sow, that's what he will reap. Don't give your children heart, don't give your parents heartache. So that you also will enjoy your own children. If you take care of your parents and you obey them and you give them joy, I bet you your own children will give you joy. Your own children will obey you. Your own children will take care of you. But never allow anything to make you raise your hand against any of your parents. The day you raise your hand against your parents, whether they say it or not, there's already a curse following that individual. The like Bible said, obey your father and your mother. The Bible says that is the first promise, uh, uh, that is the first commandment with a promise that you will live long. Look at Exodus My work this morning is very simple. It's just to introduce this topic, the consequence of rejecting sound scriptural parenting. The consequence of rejecting sound scriptural parenting. And some of you say, leave me. It's my time. You have lived your own time. Your time is old school. Mm. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you something. Those days I went to public school. At that there were no private school as we are having now. Old school. Said Mary. But I told you. What I knew then in primary 4 and 5. Those of us in GS1 and 2 now you don't know it. Old school. It's called old school. I could compete with my parents. I remember I took first from primary uh, 5 to 6. The headmaster there was calling me mathematician. Praise the Lord. What I knew then. GS1, 2, now 3 doesn't know them. In fact, I came to Joss or to our, I left the village before I know how to speak this PG in English. But I grew up in the village. There we learned English because we learned from our language to English language. We didn't learn all those uh, Namina Day English. Praise the Lord. We learned directly the English language from government school, old school. But today, ask a GS3 to write a statement if we miss broken English with. Correct English. At the end of the day, you don't make a sentence. Don't despise old school. That old school is very important. Though we understand today is computer age, there are some things that are advantage to you which we didn't have. True. But then, don't despise the cancer of your father and the cancer of your mother. Exodus chapter 20 verse 12. Exodus chapter 20 in verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother. That what? They move that die. That your days may be long upon the land. With the Lord thy God give thee. Honor your parents so that your days will be long. Any child that will not honor the parents. That will not respect the father and the mother. Because... That is the first God you know. Before you know the Lord God Almighty that created heaven and earth. Who is your first person you know in earth? Is your mother. The next, your father. Am I right? They are the one that taught you that there is a God in heaven. So you must honor them. 
the way we live nowadays, we don't want their counsel. We don't want to, they, they do not advise us. We know how to get by. After all, internet is there to advise us. The life you learn on internet will drop you on the internet. At the end of the day, you will not be here, you will not be there. But that will not be your portion. I said that will not be your portion. In Leviticus chapter 19, the consequence of rejecting sound scriptural parenting, sound, not only our biological parents, even our spiritual leaders. Thank God for this church, or for the church of Christ, that it's not like the church we have those days. You know those days where we were in the, where we came from, the youth, the adult, everybody was just there learning catechism and uh, there was no spread out, you know, teaching that we have youth leaders like we are having nowadays. We have leaders who are youth leaders who God according to the youth ministry. We have youth inside the scripture. We have everything that is tailored towards the youth to address their peculiarities. They are also your parents. And we have pastors. Many a times the heart of these our youth leaders and pastors is broken because of the life we are living. They will tell you, follow this way. You say, no, this is the way. The one I saw that people do it, that's what I'm going to do. There's something that happened in the Bible, the book of Exodus. When Moses delivered, you know, Jethro's daughter from the hands of those uh, shepherds, when they get to their father, what did they tell their father? An Egyptian was the one that helped us, but well, Moses an Egyptian. What did that teach you? The way you dress is the way you be addressed. Those of us who are doing hair like rasters, if I want to describe you to somebody, how will I describe you? That boy, that hair is like a rasta, like Bob Mali. That's how we do. That's the way you dress. Praise the Lord. That there's somebody wear something on this body. What is written there is walk around naked. That what was written on the shirt. Walk around naked. And people are doing it. So I want to describe that person. I say, see that boy going that wear water. She has written walk around naked. That is the person. The way you dress is the way you be addressed. If you dress gentle, if you dress corporate, if you dress responsible, you will be addressed like that. All those are our young ladies who want to imitate girls here and there, and our parents have talk and talk and talk. We say, mommy, leave me alone. Leave me alone. You have to be careful. They know that that place you are going, Bahanya, they know. Your parents know that that way you are following but me, no road. You are going there. Your parents know. They know that that road you are following is blocked somewhere. Those who have followed it before, they had bad results. Look at Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20. There's a consequence if you are rejecting this sound scriptural teaching. Look at how our youth leaders labor how our pastors preach to us, how they want us to be better. It's not that without you, the world will end. No. But they know you are the future of the church tomorrow. Praise the Lord. As I praise the Lord. Look at Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. And in verse 20, my son, keep thy father's commandments. And forsake not the law of who? Of thy mother. That woman. She is full of experience. Obey the law of your mother. Even if some of us, maybe you have come out from maybe ungodly relationship. Maybe your mother was not, not careful or was not married or gave birth to you out of wedlock. And she's now telling you, don't follow that way. She knew that when she followed, she knew what she, she passed through. And you say, no. You are the one. Just you, you show me the way, I will follow the way. But she knew there is no rule. That's why she's telling you, don't follow it. Obey the instruction of your mother. Praise the Lord. 
I said, Praise the Lord. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 20. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 20. The consequence of reject sound scriptural parenting. Our youth leaders, our pastors, our women, you know, sister youth leaders, they are calling you. They are teaching you. Don't go this way. Don't dress this way. You want to follow what you are seeing on the billboard. You want to see what you are, follow what you are seeing on the handset. So people who want to marry through Facebook, there was one that was celebrated who, mar who, who want to marry through Facebook. How did she end up? She was buried. A young lady. Look at Proverbs chapter 20 verse 20. Whoso cursed his father or his mother, his lamb shall be what? Shall be put out in obscure darkness. Because he will not follow the right way. He will not go the right way. And then, he will not follow the way of the Lord. But that will not be your portion. All our labor on you. Thank God for our youth leader today taught us on prayer. We will pray until you change. Paul said, my little children, whom I have begotten again, until Christ is forming you. Whom I have labored in birth again, until Christ. We will pray until Christ be forming in your life. We will pray until you will change. Those of us who are still, you know, you want to follow there, you are not made up your mind. Some say, I will not marry in this church. Some say, I will go and do this one. We will pray until you marry in the church. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You will see the will of God in this church. Amen. Many people that jump out there, they know what they are going through. I know one. I know her very well. You we were the one that brought her up. She said, uh, the father doesn't wear that gown that used to flow on the ground where you are wedding. See, that's the one she wants to wear. The mother talk her talk. He say no. Unless, if we only marry a deeper like it, they will allow her to wear. I don't know what they call it to. The one you will wear and somebody else will carry it for you. Truly, she wore it. But as I'm talking to you now, it's the church that wedded them that rented house for her and her children. She saw 99 in the house of her husband. What it meant to be 100 is only our life. She saw 99. If I you see her face now, what eyes black, what eyes yellow. She wore wedding gown. That is the truth. That is the truth. She wore it. Today is the church that is feeding her. Church. They have to employ her by force. Because the man almost, she was pregnant. The man kicked her and pregnancy and see blood. The church paid money to rescue her life. Thank God for that church. But what am I telling you? When we are talking to you, don't say, no, I want to go my own way. Go your own way. That way. Not me. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Chapter 30 of Proverbs, verse 11. Verse 11. There's a generation that curse their father, that do not bless their mother. There's a generation that are pure in their own eyes, and yet is not washed from their feediness. Look at verse 17. The eye that mocked at his father and despised to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall pick it out, and the young ego shall eat it. I have a story of a young boy. We didn't know what happened. We were in Carbon Church. And the this break into the church so many years ago and made away with some electronics and so on. We pray and uh, look, we couldn't get anything. We struggled by other ones. Do you know what happened? That boy went and steal. Why they were beating him? So I'm saying, let's take it to the police station so that others will say, no, we must kill this boy. If we don't kill him, he will continue stealing. When they were beating him, some are saying no, some are saying yes, we must kill him. The boy said, oh, I know why I'm going to die now. He said, the deeper life property I packed and to go and say, 
Then the people have to forgive me because that is why I am going to and truly they kill the boy. This is what happened in Gadabu here. They beat him until he died. It was when he was dying, he was confessing that he knew. Had he been, he didn't do that thing. Maybe they would have forgiven him. But because of what he did, that's why he was dying. We were not there. He was not sending messages and said, please tell them, I am sorry. Thank God he could recognize that it is what he did that led to what happened to him. The, uh, the, look at it again, verse 17. The eye that mocked at his father and despised to obey his mother. The ravens of the valley shall pick it out and the young eagle shall eat it. That will not be your eye. I said, that will not be your eye. As I'm looking at you, I'm seeing children who are obedient. Obey your parents. Like I said, you people are very fortunate. Very, very. You came to this world through parents who, come, who are born again. Some of you who are evil church leaders, church workers. Let me tell you. When I grew up, I grew up in the house of... Uh, my father was a herbalist. All we are doing is to carry chicken, go and slaughter for juju, and we hold the leg of the chicken. We'll be dancing, we are going to eat chicken today. But that time to eat chicken was not very easy. Praise the Lord. One day we will say, let this evil uh, juju demand for goat, so we can eat goat. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And that's how we were living. We never know anything about godliness. If you are sick, they will go and play oracle. Oracle with this boy and I. I remember the day I told my father, throw away this oracle. My younger sister was sick. And then uh, they play oracle. They say, carry sacrifice to one bush. As he gathered the roasted corn, I roasted the and had a small chick to go. Before he got there, the guy died. I said, Baba, what is the benefit of these things you are doing? And that's where we grew up. They never taught us to pray. They never had family devotion. They never took us to church until we grew to become, you know, you know, recognize ourselves and begin to go to church. But some of you, since the day you were born, it was the deeper life that Christian you. Some of you, I know some of you that attended their naming ceremony, who are boys and girls now, who were the one that named you, who were the one that prayed for you the day you were born. If I were your mother were pregnant, we were the one praying, oh God, deliver her safely. Now you grew in that atmosphere. What excuse do you have that you will not serve God? Your father never dedicated you to any idol. Neither your mother, like they did to us. They didn't put mark on you. I know how many marks they put on my body those days when we were small. If you are sick, they go and put mark. One woman will bring charcoal, they will rub on your head. Say you will be well. Praise the Lord. You know, some of all those things that we were doing those days, we are something that have my medical solution. Those days who know about medicine. Oh my God, pluck one leaf. The other one will say, no, it's not. The other one says, the they argue. They will come and rub one on your stomach. Give you some. I remember when I was small. For one year, I was not allowed to drink ordinary water. It is some concussion they soak in a pot. That's the water I was drinking. For one year, anytime when I eat, that what I will go there myself, go and fetch it. That was the water I was for a whole one year. But some of you, you are very fortunate. God has saved you. Has saved your parents. You have no reason to serve, not to serve God. You will serve the Lord. I say you will serve the Lord. Let, I don't have time. It's only 20 minutes. I will give you. I have only 5 minutes. They are about to round up. But let me read one or two places in the Bible. Now some of you now are getting to the age of marriage. Don't marry like Samson. Don't marry like Samson. Look at Judges chapter 14. Judges chapter 14. Open your Bible. Let's read it together. Judges chapter 14 in verse 3. Judges 14. Verse 3. He says, Oh, let me read from verse uh, 1. And Samson went down to Timnath and saw a woman in Timnath of the daughters of the Philistines. And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, 
I have seen a woman in Timna, a daughter of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me to wife. Then his father and his mother said unto him, Is there never a woman among the daughters of thy brethren, or among all my people, that thou goest to take a wife of the circumcised Philistine? And something said unto his father, Get her for me, for she pleased me well. Don't know that it was for his life. It was for his ministry. There are many people that are married. It was that marriage that ended their life and their ministry. That ended their career. Pray. And God will give you your wife. And God will give you your husband. Never jump to get him for me. Get her for me. Now, now. When your parents are saying, ah, this boy, is he born again? That is putty trouser or that is a uh, buttocks and it's working like this he said yes he's the one i see this guy that we are seeing is always on the street he doesn't stay at home is he the why you he said, don't you see how beautiful she is mm -hmm. bible say beauty is deceitful could be deceitful get a wife or the daughters or the children of god and you will enjoy your marriage I say you will enjoy your marriage. And then not only that, look at first Timothy chapter one. Timothy obeyed the parent. That testimony went before him. That he, 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 he got salvation. God learned how to follow God from the parents, from the godly parents he had. Like I said, we have godly parents who should follow them. First Timothy, no, second Timothy. Uh, let me read first Timothy chapter 1, verse 2. First Timothy chapter 1. Let me read from verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the commandment of God our Savior, and the Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, unto Timothy, my own son in faith. He wrote this to his son in the Lord. Grace, mercy, peace from God our Father and from Jesus Christ our Lord. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, neither give heed to feebles and endless genealogies which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is, is in faith. So do. He told him, don't give yourself to feebles. Give yourself to serious work with the Lord. In verse 8, but now we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for righteous men, for righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for men sayers, for woemonger. See, it's for them that the law is made. It was admonishing Timothy, his son in the Lord. The Lord is talking to you today. Don't say that we are in computer age and therefore we want to live the way we are living. Thank God for computer age. It has its own advantage. But there are some things computer has not changed and can never change. It has not changed that a man should be born by a man. A computer can give birth to any human being. It has not stopped anybody from dying. And when you die, it has not changed what will happen in the hereafter. Bible says the wages of sin is death. Computer internet has not changed that. It's to help us in life. When you die, it ends its work. It cannot see beyond when you breathe your last. Therefore, this old time religion, let's not throw it away. At our parents are teaching us, at our guidance are guiding us, our spiritual leaders are teaching us, let's keep to each. And the Lord will bless every one of us. I say God will bless every one of us. Let's bow our head to talk to God in prayer. That the Lord will help us to obey our parents. In the Lord. Our biological parents. This godly cancer they are giving us. That we will not forsake them. That we will not do away with them. But that we keep following the Lord. To the very end. That will take us to heaven. Where they say don't dress like the ruffians. Obey. 
talk to God in prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the minutes we have spent talking to us, not to reject this sound scriptural parenting, which is very important for us in this generation. Help us not to depart from your word. Help us not to live like those, like orphans who have no parents. We have godly parents. We have godly preachers and leaders. Help us to follow them. Bible says, be ye follower of me as I am of Christ. That's, we are following Christ and our children are following us. All of us will make it to heaven at last in Jesus' name. Amen. As we continue, continue with us. Jesus' name we pray. Let's appreciate our pastor and our father. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Did you enjoy that session? Did you enjoy the session? The consequences of rejecting sound scriptural doctrine, sound scriptural instruction. You know, I picked a, a couple of things from there. As young people, we should honor our parents in the Lord. Respect them, obey them, don't fight them because they have seen what you, you cannot see or what we cannot see. Right. And the story he gave us, Aifemi Rama, meaning they've given birth to someone who's going to revenge. In case you don't know, let me put it that way. Meaning that if you have been stubborn to your parents, when you give birth to a child, you've given birth to somebody who is going to. Say it, say it. Who is going to what? On behalf of your own parents. But you won't reject. I say you will not reject. Your amen is weak, like you, you, you don't agree with me. All right, so, um, by the way, I used to wonder what they do with those chickens and goats that they offer to the. But now you have said this, so I think I know better. Some people eat it, right? All right. Please help me welcome our second speaker for today, our pastor, Pastor Mike. Who is going to come and also give us some sound injunction? He's taking a particular topic here this morning. I need you to pay attention also. Write down, jot down your questions. I tell you, it promises to be very, very interesting, like our first speaker has started. You're welcome, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. If you're not angry with God, shout a better amen. amen. What a great privilege uh, to be here this morning. I, when I was given this invitation, I was like, Father, this is awesome. I've never been to Deeper Life Church on a Sunday service. And this is a great privilege for me. I, I want to really say I'm grateful. And I thank God for this awesome privilege. I also thank God for the leadership of the Deeper Life Youth Wing. Thank you, sir, for the privilege to be here. The Lord bless you. The Lord honor you. I want to appreciate you all. The Lord bless you. And for our leaders in the youth, the Lord bless you so much in the precious name of Jesus. All my life, I have interacted with young people. And I believe it's because of the kind of life that I lived growing up. I lived a useless life. But thank God for covenant. We were seven of us and we are, we are all boys. And we are all boys. And I... I am number six in the number. I remember one time my dad and my mom called us and said, you people are giving us headache, but it's important that we let you know something now. My father said, I and your mother entered a covenant with God when we got married. 
we were naked in the room. And we said, if you will give us children that will not serve you, make us bury. We'll accept it. But if you will give us any child at all, they must serve you. And so my dad said to us, you can do anything you want to do. You will return back to God. Amen. To the glory of God, seven of us are pastors today. Amen. And, um, before, my mother, before my mother left this world, she released her blessings upon us and our children. And she said, go, fulfill God's purpose for your life. I tell you the truth. In continuation to what daddy said, if you despise the teachings of your parents, you are despising the sweetness of your future. If you despise the teachings of your father and your mother, you have just compromised your future. My prayer for you today is that you will live here better, transformed, changed in the precious name of Jesus. Let your amen be louder. Father, I thank you and I receive grace at work in this commission. I receive grace at work in this altar. And I ask, oh Lord, that you will use me as your own vessel. May I not speak what I want. May I speak what you have ordered to be listened to. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Now I believe I'm talking to young people, isn't it? So let your amen sound like a young person's own. No, your amen must sound in such a way that the devil knows that he's handling people that are overcomers. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Living righteously amidst the present age perverseness. And I've been given a topic to talk on, and I'll do that very quickly. In fact, when I saw the topic, I said, 20 minutes is not enough. It will take a whole year. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to touch a little of it. Because when I started studying, and the Spirit of God was breathing upon this, I said, Lord, this cannot be discussed for 20 minutes. And he said, tell them what I want to tell them. The rest, leave it for me. So I believe the Spirit of God will amplify it for me. The godless pattern of the new world order and its ills. The godless pattern. The godless pattern. I, I have to take permission if I can move around. Because I talk with young people. I say that's what I do for my life. When God saved me, he told me, I am giving you another opportunity to reach out to young people. And so that is what I do for a living. I talk to young people. So I can talk for four hours. I have eaten. I'm satisfied. We are looking at the godless pattern. Hear me now and hear me well. The devil operates by patterns. By what? He operates by patterns. And he understands the makeup of man. That man also appreciates patterns. That is why even when we dress, we always dress with patterns. We want to do too much, isn't it, sir? We do things to match. If you look at our choir, it's too much. Everything we do is too much. It's because we are attracted to patterns. We are attracted to things that look, that somehow want to propel us to move in a particular direction. And so what the devil is doing in this age is to attract us as young people through patterns, through similar things that tend to catch our attention. And that is why it is not strange for you to see a child who is born in church living a life that does not look like church. Because the devil attracts us with patterns. Somebody say pattern. Say it again, say pattern. I know you all have your Bibles here. Please turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians chapter 4. We're going to be reading from verse 3. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Are you there? But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Why are they lost? You see that in verse 4. In whom the God of this world. So there is a God of this world. He's called the Prince of this world. The God of this world has blinded their eyes. Has blinded their minds. Has blinded their conscience. Has blinded their hearts. Which believe not, least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So he has blinded their eyes using the systems of the world so that they will not see or they will not receive. So there is a spirit that rules this world that corrupts the system of this world. And it has blinded the eyes, blinded the mind, blinded the conscience. That is why a young girl can dress naked. And she's comfortable with it. You are even ashamed on her behalf. That is why a young man will bring his trousers down and you virtually see his boxers in the banking hall. He's totally free. God of this world has blinded their eyes. So they cannot see what you are seeing, sir. They cannot change because there is a force that is addressing them. By privilege, I've, I was a principal for about 11 years before I left and opened my own school. Part of the challenge that we face with young people is that they want to experiment on everything. Everything you see, you want to do. You want to test. You want to experiment. Hear me now and hear me well. The devil is so scared of young people more than anything. And why he will go after young people is because he knows that in them is the future of the church. The future of the church. And so the devil will go after you. The reason why the devil is after you is because he knows your future in God. He knows your future in God. He knows that. And so he will always go after you. Listen and listen clearly. There is a God that orchestrates the happenings and it has entered into every institution of the world. That is why we have young people right now that don't believe that they cannot pass an exam without examination malpractice. And you know one thing we say? God understands. We even have parents that help their children gain admission by bribing. And they tell their children it is well. God understands. I was going to the market time with my wife and my son. My first son was with me. And while we were driving, because he was sitting in front, my wife was behind. Someone just crossed me, sir. It was not a good crossing. I didn't know when I lost it. 
And so I screamed at him. When I did that, I sensed silence in the car as we were driving. So I knew I had done something wrong. And so I parked. And I looked at my son. And I said, what I just did now is wrong. Don't do that. What I've been preaching to you and what you just saw are contrary. Don't do what I just did now. You should be able to control yourself. I just lost my control. I want to apologize for doing that. I was supposed to be a good example to you. And so I apologize. I want you to be a better version of myself. And he said, no problem, daddy, I understand. What am I trying to say? The devil will always bring opportunities for you. It is left for you to display what God has put in your inside. Remember the Bible speaking, he said, we are the light of the world. A city that is set, what? On an hill that cannot, what? Be hid. And in verse 16 of that Matthew chapter 5, he says, let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works and they will now glorify your father who is in heaven. So my life should bring glory to God. Your life should bring glory to God. The target of the devil in this end time is young people. His target is after young people and he has entered into the world system. Now, those of you that are in, into social media, you have been seeing a lot of things, right? In fact, right now, the devil is not sparing even children. Children are not spared. He's going down to little children. Going down to little children to destroy the very fabric of us. To destroy the system that has kept us. And one of the things that is really killing the world system is because the church is beginning to compromise. The church that is meant to be the light of the world. The church that is meant to be the example of men. We are beginning to compromise. How come people can no longer do business with Christians again? How come someone comes to your shop to buy something and the person notices that you are a child of God and comes there but you end up cheating the person as a child of God? It's because what we have seen is that we can't survive without joining the world. The devil has made it in such a way that we can't survive. We can't survive. A guy said, I can't meet up with this class if I don't sleep with this lecturer. I can't survive. Our children said, we can't compete with them if we don't engage in examination or practice. We can't survive. Who told you that? I told someone, who say you have to play an ungodly music in your birthday party before people can dance? Who told you that? That is a lie of the devil. And so we find Christians in Christian gatherings, in birthday parties, they say, don't worry, it is just children. And they are singing and they are dancing. And they are doing all kinds of dance. You say, don't worry, it is children. Don't worry. Hear me. Everything that you see has a spirit behind it. Everything that you see has a spirit behind it. And that is what is corrupting the system these days. I've had someone say, I would rather do a business with an unbeliever than do business with a Christian. And so we have Christian doctors that are engaged in abortions. We have all kinds of things terminating the system. People can no longer trust the church. And hear me, the reason why young people don't find Christianity attractive again is because there is nothing they see to follow. There is nothing they see to follow. But hear me, I believe God is raising a generation. I believe God is raising a generation. I didn't hear your amen. amen. Hit your chest and say, God is raising me to be a standard. Say it to yourself, say, God is raising me to be a standard. Listen to me. Jesus said, as long as I am the word, I am in the word, I am the light of the world. As long as I am here, make it a duty. As long as I am in this school, I am the light. As long as I am in this compound, I am the light. As long as I am in this house, I am the light. As long as I am in this street, I am the light. That is our testimony. That is what God expects from us. Because we are after this world system. 
It has eaten everywhere. It has entered into our education. It has entered into medicals. It has entered even into technology. It has eaten every fabric. No wonder Jesus said, go into the world. Go into the system and preach the gospel there. Let them know this is how it should be done. Let them know that this is my pattern. This is how I want it to be done. And so we have sisters that can be living with men that they are not married with. They are not married to. And they are comfortable. They are okay. The man said, I want to test you before I get married to you. And the guy said, there's no problem. As long as it's jolly testing. After all, they test food before they serve it. <laughs> Parents are no longer talking. Parents are no longer warning their children. How come we are having the decay in the system? It's because parents call it modern parenting. Hear me. The Bible is the oldest book with the latest information. It carries information that are relevant for every now of your life. For every now of your life, the Bible is always saying, now, this is what God expects from you. So there is something that you must understand. You are against a system and you must stand as a child of God in this system. No matter what, Daniel in the midst of all, he stood firm. The Bible says, Daniel proposed in his heart. It's something you must decide from your heart. Daniel proposed he will not defile himself. Are you that young girl? No matter what is happening, I will stand strong for Jesus. I told all my students at the time, get married as a virgin. Get married as a virgin. One of them graduated. Her, her younger brother just traveled to the U.S. on scholarship. And so she came and met me. And told me that, sir, I'm through with school. I'm done with university. I'm done. I'm done with my, my NYSE. I've come to you again to thank you for the things you taught me from my JSS1 till I graduated from your hands in SS3. And I went with that same teaching down to the university. I went with that same teaching to, the, to my NYC. And now I'm back. I've come to tell you that I am still a virgin. I just want you to pray and say, Lord, give me my husband. That kind of testimony is what God expects from his children. She's a beautiful girl. She must have seen a lot. But she stood strong. You must stand strong for Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and say, stand strong for Jesus. Tell your neighbor, stand strong for Jesus. In the midst of this confusion, in the midst of the trends, they call it trends. I have never sent my son, apart from the computer he did in school that I know of, I've never sent him anywhere to go and do computer. But he handles the phone and he does things I have never imagined, sir. I complain to my wife. I say, I don't know what is wrong with this boy. He said, give that boy. I say, how can you tell me to give him? Where did he learn? He said, give him. And I give the boy. Papa, 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 that is okay. Take. Where did you learn it from? We, have, we are in a world where things are coming out every day. The devil is bringing out things that want to change you. But hear me. Stand strong for Jesus. Stand strong. I've come to tell you today that God is looking for people like you. Plato State is looking for people like you. In your classes, they are looking for people like you. Can you stand for Jesus? Can you represent Jesus in your class? Despite the fashion and everything happening, and they say it is the modern age, can you still be that young girl that will close yourself up? Can you still be that young man that will dress decently? Can you still be that young person that will serve Jesus? That is what he's asking from us. Don't follow the pattern. Don't follow the pattern that the devil is bringing every day. The devil is after you. The devil is after your future. Let me show you something in scriptures, even as I close. In 1 John chapter 2 and verse 13, 1 John chapter 2.
Are you there? First John chapter 2 and verse 13. He says, I write unto you fathers because you have known him. It's from the beginning. I write unto you young men and women because you have what? Because you have what? Hit your chest and say, I am an overcomer. This is why I said the devil is scared of you. He knows that if he gets you, he has gotten the church. If you go to the US, 70% of their churches, you will hardly see a child there who is 14 years old. They are all out of church. You will see small children and old men in church. All the young men have been taken out. All the young girls have been taken out. They were singing in their youth choir. When they were coming as children, the devil saw them. He saw the giftings in them. And that is why the devil is bringing out all kinds of music talent hunt in Nigeria. He's after you. He's after you. You went to the choir and you are singing. They only know you here in deeper life. And someone tells you, your voice is very good. Though. If you can go to Lagos, they will know you in Nigeria. <laughs> and so she goes to Lagos. And she handles microphone. And one man hears the voice and says, wow. They will hear your voice all over the world. You say, amen. <laughs> you say, but you need to sing it like this. Just remove Jesus from the song. You cannot say God. It means the same thing. You say no problem. You enter plane. You enter restaurant. They take you to places and you ask yourself, Nami be this? <laughs> what the devil just wants to do to, is to remove Jesus from your mouth. To remove Jesus from the microphone that God has given to you. Hear me. Each of you is a microphone in the hands of the Lord. He said children are the heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. Happy is a man that has his quiver full of them. They shall speak to their enemies at the gate. You are the arrow in the hands of your mighty God. Don't let him down. In the mighty name of Jesus. Bow down your heads. And ask the Lord, Father, in this confusion, in this noise in the world, help me to remain steadfast in you. Can you make that prayer now? Help me to remain steadfast. May I not bring shame to your name, Jesus. May I not bring shame. Is somebody making that prayer now? May I not bring shame to your name. May they not look at me as, what a shame. May I not bring shame to your kingdom, Lord. May I not bring shame to your kingdom. May I not bring shame to your kingdom. Ask him for help. 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 Ask him for help now. Ask him for help. Ask him for his help. You need his help. Jesus, we ask for help, Holy Spirit. We ask for help, Holy Spirit. We ask for help, Holy Spirit. The battle of our soul is becoming tense. It's becoming intense. We need your help, Lord. 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 There are a lot of things contesting for our souls. We need your help. Jesus, we need your help. We need your help, Lord. We need your help, Lord. We need your help, Lord. Lord. In Jesus. Our mother, sister, towing. You're welcome, ma. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you very much for this opportunity. We are asking the Lord as you have been blessing us, continue to bless us and fulfill your word in our lives in Jesus' name. All that you want us to know, 
all that you want to impart into our lives. Father, please help us that we will not be eluded by the enemy in Jesus' name. Amen. Take charge, O God, for we submit all unto your hand. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. The topic I'm talking on says the scriptural pattern of acceptable godly parenting and his final outcome. The scriptural pattern of acceptable godly parenting and his final outcome. The question we we'll ask is what is parenting? In the dictionary word, parenting is the process of raising and educating a child from either onset or birth. When I say onset, I mean it right from pregnancy. The very day of conception that you are aware, you start training. Or after birth, the day the child is born. Because in some circumstances, you will discover that maybe that child is not your biological child. So it might be from birth. So is the parent, parenting is the process of raising and educating a child from conception or birth until adulthood. But then you ask me, what is a godly pattern? It's a godly parenting means engaging your kids in a way that must, uh, uh, that, that must accurately reflect the life and ways of Jesus. That it must accurately reflect that's like you are seeing Jesus in action. So it must accurately reflect the life and works of Jesus. Because they say actions speak louder than what? So the two must go together. To parent in a way that pleases God, you must seek God, depend on him, and also live the life of Christ. In this short term, I will talk on three points. As a parent, because some of you already started parenting and some are yet to and some are already graduating but we never graduate from parenting because even when your children are out of your uh, premises you see how thousands and one children that God has made you a keeper over their lives. So as parents you must have qualitative quality in your life for you to be able to parent children, for you to be able to raise up children. Like we know in, in the book of uh, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. Proverbs 22, verse 6 give us the basis of how to train up our children. It says, train up a child in the way he or she should go. And when he or she is old, he or she will not depart from it. You will not depart from it if the proper training is given. So that is the pattern that God has given us. But as a parent, if I'm to be a parent, a guidance, if I'm to raise up children, to train them in a the godly way, what are the quality? What, 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 what are the qualities that should be seen in my life? One, I myself must be born again. If I want to show you the way of light, at least I should know the way. All right? I should see the light so that I should be able to show you the way the light is. Then I should be a forgiving parent. I should, be, have, I should have that spirit of forgiveness. Because if you don't have the spirit of forgiveness, you see all the passages our pastor have read for us. <laughs> uh, in, some, in some culture... Once a child misbehaves, the next thing they do is to give him the balanced diet. You know the balanced diet? It shall be unto you as you have done unto me. They will cause immediately. So if I do not have the spirit of forgiveness, I will not be able to raise up children to forgive them immediately. And also I should be self-control. Our pastor told us, he said, he lost control. Because of the sudden events that took place. It's not that he deliberately do it. So we always pray to have self-control. And we must, I must be respectful because they say respect is reciprocal. If I want my children to respect me, then I should respect them. My little Jesse will say, hey, mommy, look at what you do. Look at what you did. I say, Jesse, say that I'm sorry. I, he, he has become a normal language between us. 
and that boy wants to tell me my offense here and there because he knows I will do what? I will apologize. So if I do not respect him, he will not respect me. So also if he cross my way, I will let him know. He will not say, mommy, I'm sorry. Respect is reciprocal. So I must be responsible because there are some action I take that I want to say, no, he's also a person that causes it. He's that person. No, I must be responsible to all my action as a parent. Then I must be accountable. All the children God has given to us, we should be accountable to them. We should be able to pick them before God and say, God, I and the children you have given me, we are for what? Size and wonder because I was able to go on my knee. I was able to follow your word and that is why these children were able to come out the way they are. So I must be accountable to myself, to my family and to God. Then I must be humble. The main thing that is making most of us, we're still going to talk at length. What makes most of us to have disagreements with our parents is this word humility. So I must be humble. When my, my children should be able to talk to me. If I'm humble, my children know the language to talk to me, to let me understand issue. Then kindness, generosity. I must be kind. If I'm not kind, I'm the type of person that myself, myself. No, I must be kind. I must be generous. I should let my children know that I must render a helping hand to people around me. If I'm not doing it, I'm typically training my children that yourself is the whole thing. So I must be generous and also I must be industrious as a parent. I should not just wait for one salary. I should not be depending for one way straight forward. I'm waiting for the end of the month. <clears throat> I must be industrial. As a mother, I know what needs to be done. You know, women have their brain calculate like machine. As they are doing this one, they are doing that one, they are doing this one. They must, we must be industrious and also we must have faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. And I must be faithful. That is the qualities of a scriptural godly parent. Then I want to talk to you of the qualified requirements. I mean qualified patterns. What are the patterns that are required? All what I'm going to talk is about three key, uh, Q. The first Q I've talked to you about qualities of parents. I'm talking about the qualified pattern. What are the qualified patterns that I need to use as a parent to guide my children in, to raise my children in a godly way? Number one, is love. You see, if I do not teach my children to love, love from first of all, knowing that God loves them and they need to give their life to Christ, I will be laying on the wrong foundation. Most of us that are here, your parents are born again. Your parents are members of the church or even leaders as our daddy have said. And they do not burn you by laying you on the sacrifice or laying you for any idol. They show you the love. They have given their life to Christ. And they are not teaching you as parents the way of love. Love must be paramount in the family. So the parent must first of all teach the children the way of the Lord and love, honor for God above any other thing. That you can see in Matthew chapter 2. 22 verse 33. Please, because of time, you will pardon me. I may not read plenty of scripture. So, you see Matthew chapter 22 verse 33. Another one is, as a parent, as I'm training them, I have the love. I am born again. I show them the way. That in every training, I should let them know that I'm training them with love. That you can see in Luke 12, 42, 43. In, the, in Romans 8 28 because sorry in John chapter 13 verse 34 let's read John 13 verse 34 John 13 verse 34 because as a parent if you, are, if you do not if that love is not there your training is just uh, I see it as uh, it's not correct John chapter 13 verse 34 it says a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, and as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. You know there are some parents, you know why we have to talk about love? Some people, uh, parents, the child with them is not their biological child, you know? So there's that tendency that it's not even my own. So I must I die for this child? 
if love will constrain us to go to the extreme to make sure the best is being brought out of that child. We bring out the best in the child, no matter who that child is to us, either biological or adopted child. So also, why training the qualified, the, the qualified quality or pattern that is required is that you accept every child as your own with their works. You know, we have what they call individualized, individual differences. Every child has its peculiarity. So the way you handle A is different from the way you handle B. Like some of us say, if I want to talk to you, there are some of you, when I want to talk to you, I'll hold on your neck. There are some of you, when I want to talk to you, I'll just say, yes, ma, where do ma? Because I know your boundary. So I know how to treat you. Also, at all, if parents are training these children, and they know the specialization, the peculiarity in every child, you handle them with their peculiarity. So if you handle them as everybody, hey, like this, mm -mm. study your children and follow them based on their individual differences. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. You would be a faithful steward. Because as a parent, if you do not use this pattern of faithfulness, you may be partial. And that's why you see some parents, they will have some children that they love. The other one they don't love. They will spend more quality time with this one, they will spend less time with that one. I, my children came one day and said, Mommy, please, can you tell us who is your favorite child? I said, Here. They said, Your favorite child? I said, I don't have one. I don't have any favorite child because the same room I used to carry all of you, the same process I used to deliver all of you, I treat you equally, but I know everybody's specialization. I know you, I know who you are, so I follow you the way you are. So I know how to, by the grace of God, hand to you. They kept quiet. That was how I was relieved from that uh, uh, big question. You teach them God's word. Teach them to, to be responsible. Parents teach your children to be responsible. When your parents are teaching you to be responsible, do this one. You say, is it me? Only me? And if you start to disobey, according to our ideas, he said, disobedience starts in unconscious mind to what? To conscious mind, from subconscious mind, you will not just say, I won't do it. I won't do it. And as you're saying it, you're getting used to it. Your body is getting tough. You're, and your parents are keeping quiet. You're not saying, Yes, I'm getting them. They know my stand. Yes, they, I'm getting them. Gradually, before you know, it has become your lifestyle to disobey. That is why when you enter exam hall, when they say, Don't turn the paper, because the negative is your uh, pattern, you will do all, you will turn the paper. They will collect the paper and send you out. Don't answer question number four because you don't follow instruction. You will go and answer question number four. So, if you learn to follow instruction and be responsible, your parents are teaching and say, follow it like this, do it like this. You want to put a longer head down. No, it's not the way you people want it. I will prove to you I have a better way. You are missing it. Be calm. Say, mommy, why this way? If you don't understand, ask why. Teach them the scripture. Teach them. You know, do you know why many of you are having problems with the church standard? Should I tell you? Your parents only teach you don't without teaching you do. Do you understand the ritual of don't and do? Don't means you cannot do this all. No, not in this all. I'm not going to take it. Don't you know me? I'm a leader. Don't you? People will talk about me. Do you know the implication? Mm -mm. Carry the child. Come. This is what the Bible says. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says, do it like this. Do it like this. This is the reason why I do it like this. And this is the reason. This is what is going to happen to you. That child will know that. You are teaching him from what? From a standard word of God. So if you do not teach them using the word of God and you are just teaching them, say, in the church they say like this. Pastor say like this. My child will say, mommy, please don't, 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 don't use uh, what pastor preach. I say, okay, let me give you the Bible. Um. I will give you the Bible. Um. So we should be able to teach our children precept upon precept, the doctrine of the word of God. Let them know why this and why that. That will not help them to continue. Also, you have to be flexible as parents. Be flexible. Don't be rigid and say, I have said it and it's going to come to pass.
pass. Mm -mm. Even when you have made commandment, ten commandment, and you discover he's not working, call your children. Say, come. I said this thing, but it's like it won't work. Is this one better? Or allow the children to suggest. I, I said, I told my children, I said, come, let's discuss. Which pattern do you think? Which one do you think is? I used to talk to them as if they are my mates. But they will give me an idea. They will tell me, if I want to come out, let me tell you something. If I dress finish, I'll go and tell my queen, auntie, this is my clothes, is it okay? She will lose, she'll say, you want to go and disgrace me? Deeper lifestyle. I'll say, okay, please tell me the better way. She will say, okay, like this. I will follow. Do you know why I do that? If she too is going contra, I'll say, lady, come. This one is not like this. Let's do it that way. Verse, verse. He said, do not provoke your children. Do not provoke your children. Your parent can provoke you. But the Bible says, do not provoke. We will talk about it at balancing square. Provoking means that they will tell you to do something and some of you will say you will not do it and they want to take action, radical action. And they will say, I will not do this because you did not do this. And you get provoked. And I say, okay, daddy, I will do the worst. <laughs> Let's come to compromise. Let's sit down and dialogue it. By discussion, we can set to issue. They also cultivate maturity and common sense. According to 1 Corinthians 13, 9, he said, when I was a child, I think like a child. Now that I'm getting mature, I should be able to think like a mature person. We should be able to cultivate that maturity. There are some things that you don't use Bible. You use your common sense. They give your child homework. They gave you homework. And you know you have to submit tomorrow. And you are telling me you are going to do it tomorrow. I will tell you where is the possibility of you making it tomorrow. There are some things that we should sit down and talk it heart to heart with our parents. If you say, hey, I want to dress this way, they'll be looking at you. How naked are you? I will not ask you. I say, if you see me like this outside, will you be happy to identify with me as your mother? Common sense. So also, we look at, we should practice forgiveness daily. We do not provoke one another. We should seize the special moment. Hello, how are you? Happy birthday. Siri, happy birthday. Oh, mommy, look at my result. What a wonderful, excellent. See that, I appreciate this. You know, you seize that small opportunity to let your children know that they are excelling. Commit everything to God. To have relationship with God. Let them know. Let the children have personal relationship to God. Let them have respect for authority. Let them be content with whatsoever they have. Let them be courageous. Let them be perseverance. Let them be patient. And in the summary, we teach our children to be humble. After you get all the success finished, don't raise your children. I'll tell my children, I'll say, don't let people see it as it. Don't even let God know that you are thinking that your success is by your screen. It is God. Then the qualitative results. What are the qualitative results? I told you I'm talking about 3Q. The qualitative result of scriptural pattern of raising children. As the love is there, the respect is there, the intentionality of the child. You had the intention to do what is right. All these things have their Bible passage. I can see pastor is already waiting for me there. Then I said, youth, please, you send boundaries, limits to also whatsoever you are doing and always show gratitude. Some of you, you felt it is, the, it is your right for your parents to send you to school. As they are giving you school fees, just turn and go. Oh, daddy, thank you. I really appreciate. I'm grateful. You are telling them to do more. And also, you should have grace and forgiveness for your parents. This is where I want to hit at them. I want to hit the name. Now, sorry, please. Pardon me. Do you know that the way we are getting it wrong in this church is that most of our youth think that holiness covers everything. It covers everything in life. No. There are some things, like our daddy, he said, in his place, they do sacrifice. This is how they do things. There are some training. Maybe 
based on the background, environment through which your parents were being brought up, those things have become part and parcel of their life. And so when they also are bringing up children, they intend to do what? Do likewise. They, didn't know, they, they will not know that they are still reflecting on the past. Now, it takes a deliberate effort as a parent, after you have given your life to Christ, to know your weakness and your strength. Now sit down and make analysis of your weakness and see how you can overcome it to be constrained. Clap for Jesus. Now, that is for parents. Now for you as a child, growing up under this parent, you see them exhibiting some character. You will not say, as a Christian, is it what they're supposed to do? Why is he behaving like this? If they say they're born again, they should... <clears throat> There is room for forgiveness. Ah, daddy do like this. Maybe because he went out of self-control. That is why he acted this way. God, I've forgiven my daddy. I will still give him his audience. If you refuse to forgive your parent based on their errors or their mistake or their weakness and you envelop it, you put it in your heart, you will grow up with it and you go and practice it directly or indirectly in your own home. Do you understand me? So you should create room for forgiveness now and relate with them. If it's something you can go and meet them, go and meet them and say, sir, I'm sorry. This is this, this, this is said to it amicably. Don't, don't have any grudges, anything in your heart against your parent. Then what are the results you're going to have? You have clarity in life. Your life will be balanced. You will be connected. You will be accepted. You will be authentic. You will be accessible. You will be motel and you will be resolute. Now, to me as a parent, to you as youth, what is the summary of this talk? The summary is four words that will give me an answer. The four words are mercy. Your salvation, everything that you know mercy carry, mercy. Plus love. The training must be with love. Your relationship with your parent must be with love. Number three, grace. Without grace. Without grace, you cannot cope. It is the grace of God that can help you to follow. Number four is prayer. Go to the Lord in prayer and he will give you, I don't want to say the answer. The word mercy, there is a letter there. Love, there is a letter there. Grace, there is a letter there. Prayer, there is a letter there that is similarly reappearing in each of the world. What is the, uh, the letter? E. e. Good. Now, give me a word that have four E that we can use to put the answer. Who is that? Who is that? Okay, I have a gift for you. That's excellency. Mercy plus love plus grace plus prayer We give you excellency. Excellency is a quality of being excellent. God bless you. Let us pray. Father, we pray the best you have for us. Bring it out in us. So that our family, we ourselves, we enjoy ourselves. Our family, we enjoy us. And the society at large, we see us as a blessing. Let it be so. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Thank you very much, Ma. Did you enjoy the session? Are you taking something home today? Are you sure? Are you happy you're here today? Should we do this again? I enjoyed myself. Uh, talking about showing gratitude. Please, I will take a few questions and then we'll close in the next few minutes. I, I, I visited a family where I was brought up to say thank you very much after eating. How many of you do that? After eating, you thank your parents. And then I went to a family and after eating, the children would just walk away. It was strange. Me, I would come and say, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, ma. 
one day the mother called me and said, why do they thank me? Now my, now my responsibility, now my duty to give you food. I said, ha. I didn't stop because you have to say thank you. A few days back, I was at home and then we just finished eating something and my four-year-old daughter, once they were, they were done, they wanted leaving. Their grandmother was there in the house. And then the grandmother called her back and said, go and say thank you to daddy and mommy. And she looked at her and said, for what? <laughs> four-year-old. And the grandmother said, for providing the food. And she said, it's God that provided now. <laughs> I looked at my wife. My wife looked at me. We didn't know what to say. Then the grandmother added, okay, go and thank them for cooking the food that God provided. Gratitude. You know, we feel it's our parents' duty to pay our fees. So when they don't pay, you don't understand with them why they didn't pay. You accuse them. You fight them. Some of you almost beat them. I won't walk in this house again. I, I hope you got something from that presentation. We've learned how to be wonderful young men and young women. Wonderful young boys and young girls. And also how to be wonderful parents. In the next few years, five years, less than that, ten years, many of us will become parents. And then... Mm. I like the amen I get. Some people don't believe it. Say me, small boy like me. I thought like you too. The things you've learned here from all our four speakers, please go and write, put it in, what do they call it? If you archive, archive is far away. You know, something in the archive, we forget it, like our libraries in our universities. Let it be like your phone. I use phone because we know what phone means to us as young people. You can forget your Bible at home, you will come to church. But if you forget your phone, even if you are at the gate of the church, you will go back home. Am I right? Let the words you've heard today be so dear and close to your heart. So you don't forget them. And go out there and shine. Can we get a few questions? Three, four people, if you have questions... That's one. Thank you very much. That's two. That's three. A fourth person, and then we are good for the day. Yes. Number four. Please come out. Four of you come out. The four of you should come out. Thank you very much. Please, let's clap for them as they come out today. Okay, so Sir and Ma, and our leader too, Feel free to answer. We'll just give brief answers to the questions. If you want to add anything, you can add so we can gain clarity. Thank you very much. So we start with number one. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I really appreciate our fathers and the resource persons that was brought today. And um, I was really blessed personally. Many questions were answered, but I still have one. And um, though I have other ones, but they're not related to this one, but concerning this, I am a member of this church. I was born, I was raised, I'm still a member, and I'll always be a member. And um, we've met several persons, and um, my daddy here can testify, he knows me very well, down to my father's house. And there are many things I've encountered with several people Leaders are like members, workers on all phases of life. Um, but there's one thing that I've noticed. When a youth...
vision? Do you know my dreams? Do you know my purpose? Do you know why I was created? I have to discover them outside. It takes a lot. And I know the damage it went. It caused delayed. It caused so many things. And now I am getting to find, but you see, I have so many things to treat, so many injuries to heal, so many things. So for many who have find themselves in those very situations, how as leaders, as resource persons, how can we help them? Thank you very much. I hope we got the question. When uh, children lock up from their parents and then they are going through a lot of agonizing conditions, and some of them have even done things that the parents don't know. How do we help such people? Anybody can, any member of the panel can answer this. Okay, our father. How do we help such young people who have gone through a lot of stuff that their parents don't know? And then, um, like he said, they claim to know us, but in reality, we look at them like, you don't know me. You're just saying that. How can we help such people in that condition, sir? Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Where I read during my submission in that collusion that said, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Obey your parents in all things. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our level of maturity differs. And uh, we should take it like that. Bible said for a man to be without knowledge. What happened? He said it's not good. Praise the Lord. See, knowledge you are seeing, very, very important. That is why the Bible says, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed, that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Many of us, even uh, adults and, and the leaders and youth leaders in the church, we don't study. We don't understand the word of God. There are some things that the Bible enjoins us to do which we don't do. Bible also told us that the priest lives should be able to retain knowledge. It's not everything you hear that you say. As ministers and leaders, talking to all of us, even you the youths, you are growing up. Some of us are already becoming deputy leaders to your youth leaders. Himself that's okay is a leader. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When you share idea with your leader, and that idea, or maybe your pain, or your fear, your constraint with your leader, or with somebody you trust, and the person betrayed that trust, didn't behave maturely, turn it to a sermon, and begin to say it here and there. Number one, you will feel betrayed. Am I right? Yes, but the first thing you do, the very first thing you do is to pray for grace. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because if you react to what has just happened, you will make many mistakes. I told somebody that when you, anything, something happened to you and you are not happy, don't talk at that time. If you talk at that time, you are sure to say the wrong thing. Am I right? Many of us have come across some issues that make us all happy. That is not the time to talk. That is not time to complain. That is time to go to God. It's the closest confidant. Go to God and pray for grace. After you have prayed, meet that leader. Sir, I'm disappointed that this thing I told you, this is how you handle it. It has made me to lose my confidence in you. You understand? After you talk to him, whether he apologize, some who are sincere may apologize, some may argue. It's not your matter I was talking, but he knew it was your matter he was talking. The next thing, if you have issues, don't close up. A problem shared is what? It's a problem half solved or even solved. 
So when you have issues again next time, don't say I will close up because this one has happened. No. Look for a mature leader. Share your mind. Don't close up. Because if you close up, that may even be may lead you to a more bigger problem. Someone is sick. I will share it with somebody. It may not even be a medical person. And that person may have gone through such experience. I said, do it this way, do it this way. Truly, you did it that way, and you see you are out of the problem. If you say, I will share my any, anything to anybody again, you may be to a bigger problem. Pray, go to the person, then next time, look for a more mature leader. Even when you are sharing with the leader, see, tell him your experience, sir. I had issue like that. I shared with somebody and he betrayed me. This one I'm sharing with you. I trust you because I know you will not betray me. Put a word ahead of him. So that if you know that sharing people's problem is not the best. Ministers don't do it. Pastors don't do it. We hear a lot of things. I know there are sometimes we make reference. You know, we just say something. But many a time, the things we say may not be what has happened to you. I know I will say something some, one day like that. Uh, I remember I had that in some way. But, but I bet you someone around there may have passed through that experience. will be thinking I'm talking about him or her. Mm. At times, it may not be like that. We make so many examples for us to learn so that we don't fall into the same problem. The Lord will help us. So don't close up. Don't close your mind and then say, I will keep everything to myself. Still pray. Share your problem with a mature leader. They will give you godly counsel. And the one that will betray you, don't keep it yourself as enemy. Say, this person has done evil. I will never talk to him again. Though you are related with him, but at the back of your mind, there is hatred. Remember, we are dealing with God who knows all things. Never have hatred. Go to the person straight. This is what you did. So I am not happy that what I shared with you, you didn't keep it. And this is how you treated me. Uh, you betrayed my confidence. Let it end there. Don't have all hatred. Don't be playing hacky packy. You know some of these things you are saying. You know I know some of them. Uh -huh. That at a point you were, you that used to go to church early and pray, at a point you were coming to church late. At a point you were avoiding that district. You know I know all those things that you are saying. If that is immaturity. Even when they complain to me that you are no more zealous as you used to be and already I have no water punch. I said, pray for him and follow him up. He will come. So, don't behave him. Thank God that you are older than what you were at that time. Am I right? The way you are now is not the way you were 2016. And you are more matured now. So, you will not behave like that. God bless you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Yes, number two. Um, I want to thank you, Daddy and Mommy, for all you said. But I have a very big burden in my heart, and I want to ask. Mommy mentioned some few things, and um, she mentioned some criteria or qualities a parent should have, you know, while training a child. And she mentioned few like a lot love and um, patience and all of that so i want to ask on behalf of myself and some other youths that cannot speak up i want to ask as a youth growing up in a family background whereby the parents are so strict and then you don't have any communication with the child or any relationship at all with the child and daddy I remember daddy said we should be obedient to our parents in all things and the instruction in the Lord. Right, that's good. And then we find out that our parents just come and just say, okay, do this, do that, do this, do that. It's final. Just follow what I tell you to do. And then you are dumbfounded. You don't understand. And you have your own you know, thinking or what you feel or how you feel in the situation and you don't know how to relate it because you are not relating with these people that are giving you this information. And then it's so difficult for you to obey because you have, there is, there is, there is, there is no, there is no agreement because someone is telling you do this. Yes, quite all right. It might be okay. You might be, 
like guiding the child based on like a father but the child doesn't know or understand where you are coming from or why you are even telling the child to do this or do that and he's longing to ask why or why are you giving this information i have my own regard i want to do this like this i feel like it's okay like this but why are you giving me this instruction to do this like and there is no there is no way that can happen how is a child supposed to cope in that kind of thing? What is, is he just go ahead and do it without silence and body and crying in his heart for not being head of or, or being able to speak up or communicate to this to this to this to our parents, so to speak. Secondly, I want to ask, as a parent, and then okay, we we all know quite all right, Christians, you daddy said some of us grew up and were brought up in a Christian home. Fine. All right. If in a situation where we well know that this our dad or our mom are Christians, but then you know when we do wrong or we expect correction, yes, some of us we expect we want that correction, but then in the correction you call your child names like you are useless, you're this, you're that, and then for years you have been hearing that, and you come and you want to change, and maybe you start saying okay. Um, I told you that, or the child goes back and says, you have been calling me useless, now you want to tell me to do this or do that. Please, I don't want to hear you. You say, you say I'm useless, I'm useless, I've agreed, and I'm, that is what I am. How do a youth tend to forgive and to let go of that pain? And also to be able to listen to this, like, to these parents again, that are coming again to guide these children and say, okay, do this, do that. And then with all what she has heard or what he has heard, he's not able to enter. The thing is not entering. So what you are saying is not making sense. So how does the child cope in this kind of thing? Please, I want to ask. Thank you very Thank you. much. Okay, so we'll hand over to... Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 says... Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment which every, with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. I have said it because I know this is the primary problem we are having in the church. And I said, our parents say do. Uh, they would just say don't without teaching us do. In the terms that they may not show you this, the reason why they want you to do this. Or why this thing is like this. For dialoguing, for us to dialogue together as parents, it helps us to solve a lot of issues. But for you as an individual, first and foremost, fear God. If you are born again, you will do that which is what? Well good. Let me tell you myself. Before I gave my life to Christ, I was a radical person. Let me just be sincere with you. In which, when I want to fight then, I don't fight with girls. I fight with boys. I was a brought up Lagos girl. <laughs> when I come out in the streets, don't glorify me for evil. When I come out in the streets, the boys fears me. Uh, there is where we call feeling sukwa. We have, you know, I'm, I'm a girl, I miss boys. So that energy is there. And I was brought up in Lagos. I escaped from police in Lagos. You know those kind of energy, the intelligence in me. But then, all those things, I was doing them. My parents tell me what to do, I will tell you what I'm going to do. But do you know, <laughs> the day I met with the Lord Jesus Christ, when I came back home, everything changed. I became so quiet, so humble, nothing again moved me. I did not tell my parents I'm born again. Simple. It was my parents that said, come, what happened to this? Is it, is it told you that it's in this house? My mother scattered money eh, inside her wallet. She now said, you come, come, come and stay in the shop for me. I said, okay, I went there. After I fi she finished, she came back. She counted the money. She was trying to test what is wrong with this girl. I didn't touch the money as usual. If now I know how much I carry. And I know where we're going to land in the evening. But I didn't touch. She said something is wrong. So what I'm trying to say is that I did not 
other way correct my parents or tell them. My parents were even unbeliever. But the life I live after giving my life to Christ is the one that posed to my parents that this girl is a changed person. Do you know that? It's not my parents that not tell me what to do. I show them what I'm to do. My life. And I start living a life. They, they are the ones that are now commenting on my life. So when you, are, when you give your life to Christ, it guides you in all things in which it will lead you what to do. But let me come back to deeper life. Because I am a leader in the church, I will want my child to dress like deeper life. I want them to wear everything, to do everything according to deeper life. I call, let me be specific to you. This is practical. My daughter will say, hey, hey, because you are a leader, I should not wear this. I say, my daughter, come. If I'm not a leader, I am a well disciplinarian from where I'm coming. Yes. So, this thing, you can't do it even if I'm not a leader. So, I will not want it. Do it this way. This is the reason why I'm telling you. Because it's like this, it's like this. I will not open in the Bible like this, like this. If you don't even want to hear Bible, my parents did not use Bible. They just used moral principle to train me. And hear me, I can't get Bible additional. I can't get God, my father. I can't get GS again. Uh -uh. I will not tell my daughter. These are the reasons why you should follow the word of God. But let me tell you, the background of your parents may compel them to be doing something. Do you understand me? Follow them with patience. I learn to forgive. And I explained to you, I say some people are brought up where they will curse their children, even early in the morning. They see it as an habit. Reject it in your heart. Okay? God is not my portion. I know a child. Who the father say is useless? You are the dullest child in my family. And the child said, I will prove to you I'm not the dullest child. The child went and prayed. He gave his life to Christ. He now forgive his father. He left to forgive his father. He now started portraying his academy. This child is coming out as a first class student. Now, if you hold on that one, and he said, I will not forgive my father. He said, I'm useless. I will prove to him what useless is he. What it means to be useless. Mm. And it's go away what life. Mm. Who has he cheated? Himself. He has But you have to know what is good and follow what is good. And fear God. If you fear God, you will do what is right. I'm sure I've answered the two questions. Are you okay? Are you okay? Forgive us. Sometimes we want to be, we feel that it's by rigidness that we can compel our children to do something. But in love, I said it, love, we must learn to sit down and love one another and talk in love. God bless you. Okay. My sister. Just stay hold on. Amen. Amen. I, I don't want to talk from the angle of the parents. I want to talk from your own point of view. Because you have just spoken the minds of a lot of us while we were growing up. Um, because, um, like I said, my parents, we are leaders in church. And they expected us to do a particular kind of things. In fact, there was a time my father went to church and said, announced in the church, I have seven boys. I don't want to see any girl in my house. It was a big announcement. He said, if I see you in my house, he said, parents, hold your daughters. Tell them not to come to my house. I don't want to see any girl in my house. Now, I, I had to just say that to soften you up, okay? There are some times we expect a lot from our parents, and we don't get it. We expect a lot of mentorship, leadership, and we don't see exactly what we are looking for. But mommy said a very striking thing which I want to really emphasize even as I just summarize. If you are truly a child of God, born again, saved by God, you will be willing to allow the Spirit of God to guide you in everything you do. Allow the Spirit of God to guide you. Parents will instruct. Parents will guide. Out of love, they say, do this, do this. And what they might be saying might not be what God is really saying. It might not be bad, but that might not be God's plan for your life. But what I'm saying is, submit yourself. It also speaks of humility, because no great person goes on in life without passing through the tests of humility. And God might be using that to test your humility level. 
before he takes you to the next level. So it is well with you, my sister. The Lord bless you so much. Amen. Thank you. All right. So uh, be before we take the next question, all, if, if you are in that kind of condition, please, in addition to what they have said, we have leaders in the church you can speak with that can talk with your parents. Are we together? Some of us are scared because if I tell my pastor and he calls my father, my father will come back home and say, come here. Come here. You reported me to pastor. But that should not discourage you. If you know your father has that tendency, I think we can also tell our pastors, if I tell you this thing, sir, or ma, and you call my father and tell him like this, he will flog me at home. But I won't hide it. You have to speak out. You have to still tell our leaders. They will now pray for wisdom on how to handle the matter. Well, it might be maybe during preaching. I don't know. When that is around, I don't know. They may not mention your name, but they will say, Some of you who don't listen to your children, you don't. I don't know how you do it, sir. Amma. But I know that somehow the Spirit will lead. But if you don't talk, you will be dying in silence. Are we together? Third question. The question is, as in, there are many, but I will use. Okay, just, okay, if you can summarize it so because of time. As I am saying, I will be adding them up on each other. Oh, okay. I was really touched through to this program. After the service, yes, I program. wanted going, but I was like, let me wait and see what will happen after the service. And you were touched? I was really touched, especially from what mommy said. And what this pastor. My question is about, you know, we this youth, we have issue with this issue of relationship, marriages, based on deeper life doctrine. I'm a son to a pastor. Deeper Life Church, a regional of us here. We have this issue like you praying for the will of God. They'll be like, go and pray, go and pray. I want to know something. Because according to the Bible I read, uh, Jacob loved his wife. Isaac loved his wife. So I want to know is it that you must see her as the will of God before you create feelings for her? You loved her? Oh, you can see a sister like Atmir, love her. And according to the Palai doctrine, to what I've heard, I don't know whether I'm quoting right or wrong, they will tell you it's a crime to approach a sister and say, Sister, see this, this. They'll be like, Go and meet the pastor. Tell him first before. But to me, like, you don't compel me to follow what I don't feel for. I must feel for her, I must love her before. Whether it's the will of God or it's not the will of God, I must love her first. That is it to me. All right. Because okay. I've not come across in the Bible. Yes. Somebody just woke up and just said, eh. they said, that's your wife. And because today it's affecting many homes in Deeper Life Church. Yeah. That is affecting them because they say that's the will of God. They just followed it according to the church doctrine. Not from their heart. There was no feeling in it. He just woke up and eh, I saw her in a vision. I prayed. She covered my head and this, this, this. You got to meet pastor. And that's all. So okay. I want to have clarity. Okay. Is it, is it free for you to approach someone? Uh, oh, oh, okay, calm down, calm down. Right, calm down. I wanted to appeal to our, our leader for this region to hold our next combined service, maybe in the next few weeks, and let's talk about these kinds of issues. Our <laughs> uh, 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 father is here. He, he has to give us approval first. Because he's the central leader. But sir, you can feel the pulse of the youths. They, they, we love this. It's us. Right. 
Uh, but for the question today, let's get an answer from our pastor first before we move on. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. I feel happy to answer this question. Uh, the reason is this. Any of us don't really know what we teach. You get some of these things from people. Uh, this one said this how they said it. This one said this how they said it. And this is what should be done. When we are talking about the will of God in marriage, okay, if you notice when Abraham sent his servant, what did he pray? He asked God to what? To guide him. Praying for the will of God is for you to ask God to what? Guide you. You have never gone through that journey before. Have you? You have never gone through that journey before. And the Bible says, the heart of man is deceitfully what? Wicked. Who can know it? You know, you might see somebody, especially character-wise and all that, and you think, wow, this woman is a, a, a wife what? Materia. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And, um, and you might go into relationship okay just and all that the real character will not show until when you have got into real world marriage and then you begin to have problem now i have the opportunity of serving as an officer of church and we have had many cases of people that felt what the church is uh, talking about, the will of God, is, is a mirage, it's a waste of time. And then some will go, they'll go, they'll go behind. I know of somebody in those days, he said the Bible says that before you go to the court, you should do what? Settle with what? With the adversary. <laughs> eh? <laughs> and who is the adversary? Your wife. The person you want to get married to. That go and discuss with the person first. And after you have agreed, then go to the marriage committee. When the brother made that comment some years back, they were still praying to know the will of God. I made up my mind that, oh God, I want to do your will. I just want to do. I'm not looking for angel. Because there's no angel anywhere you understand i'm not looking for but just i just want to marry somebody that is your will for my life and i was not looking for dreams you understand and then the brother felt if i just wasted your time eventually the first person he went and did a uh -huh, he went and settled the matter with Eventually, he still came to the committee, and uh, the committee found out from him. He said, yes, he has spoken to the lady. He was not crucified. The only thing is that the church will ask you to go and pray. They will discipline you because you have not done right. Eventually, when he met that person, after he spoke to that person, they allowed him, he went ahead, the, the, the whole process. After a while, the lady fell into immorality with somebody else. And he has been spending on the lady. When he get to know, he went to the lady and began to pronounce curse, begin to say all sorts of things. Eventually, the person left the church. Not because the church did not allow him to marry the girl, but because he was walking by sight. Now, when we are talking about praying for the will of God, nobody say you must dream. Do you understand? Because the challenge I'm having is that some of us just feel that the will of God is that you must pray and then you will dream and the sister will come and say, I want to marry you. <laughs> Nobody said that when you pray, you must see a vision that you just, as you pray, you just stay like this, the person that just come the first. No. When we talk about the will of God, it could just be mere love you have, love you have for the person. 
a strong love. When you go to the marriage committee, they say, you say you want to marry, you like this person, you want to marry, how do you know that the person is the will of God? If your own is just love you have for the person, say, I just love her. The marriage committee will not tell you and say, we should love her. Have you dreamed? Nobody will question you on that. Because I'm not going to marry her for you. You, you understand? The marriage committee is not the one that is going to marry the person you are the one. If you say it is, say, I just like her. I just what? Like her. Then the marriage committee says, so, okay, no problem. You will fill the form. I've seen the form severally. Some people will not come and tell that it's not. I don't know how some of some of our, some of our, some of those who have done, are married, they will convince, confuse us, make us feel as you must dream. Yes, yeah, it's written in the Bible that you must dream. So the church is not teaching you that you must dream. If it is just feeling you have for the person, I felt I, I love this person. The church is okay. Go and run your tests. You run tests. They will invite the lady. The lady will run her test. And after they say, please go and make your intention known to the lady. Now, the reason why the church discouraged us going behind to go and discuss with the lady is because if we allow everybody to be going behind and be discussing with the lady, we will cause confusion in the church. Because there are some of our ladies, they are kana. They are what? Kana. You might have gone to her and discussed with her. And then the person has agreed. Maybe you, you have just graduated, you have not gotten a job. And then another one now go behind and discuss with her. That one is a medical doctor, he's driving vehicle. You understand? And then she's, her mind is with you, her mind is with that one. Another one now go again and, and discuss with her. And that person is a banker. Is that not confusion? Let's tell ourselves the truth. Is that not confusion? It's confusion. That's the reason why the church, the, the Bible, the church teaches us that on this area of marriage, if you have the conviction that this person, you love the person, you like her, no problem. Just meet the committee and say, this person, I like this person. I want to marry her. Say, hey, you want to marry her? I say, yes, okay. Go and run your test. They will not discourage you. They will invite the lady. Find out if the lady is actually born again. Well, if the lady is not born again, and uh, you say you want to marry, marry the lady, the church will not want to marry the lady. And then when you now, after that, you will now be allowed to propose to the lady. There is a particular case of somebody that did all these arrangements. You know, I was in a church, one of the districts the other day, a, a, one of the youths, one of the leaders said in their school, in the university, somebody told, uh, told her that, uh, you know, if you don't marry before you leave the campus, you will not marry again. So that they should do follow-up. That uh, they told them, a leader in the church, uh, in the, that they were told that they should do what? Follow-up. That follow-up means that hook somebody just, just, you know, that is uh, doing the adversary type of a thing. And he was asking that, why should it be so? So the church is not, no, this, this other person, they married in the church. But is this a backyard business? They still came to the marriage committee. And then the marriage committee will ask you, have you informed the lady? If you say yes, they will rebuke you. Why should you do that? They will ask you, how old are you, are you in the church? I'm sorry, and you still do that? They, they say, okay, maybe go and pray for one month, for two months, for three months, and come back. When you come back, they will still ask you, do you still like the person? You say, yes, okay, no problem. You go and propose. And this brother, after they got married, and uh, maybe just have a, uh, is, it, uh, is it one or many child, the woman left the marriage. She has married another person. The brother is in bondage now. He cannot marry. And the reason why he went for the sister is because he saw her in the choir. He knows she is this, she is that. But eventually now the person has married somebody else. So that is why what we teach you is to guide you. Nobody compel you that you must. In fact, some will even come and say, this is the person. They say, go and pray. They come back say, this is the person. Nobody will force you, you should not go and marry that person. Because you are the one that is going to marry. I am married though. Eh? I will not marry again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. 
So that is what the church teaches. It's not that you must dream. No, it's not. It's not the will of God is not about dream. Dream is just one out of, out of so many ways that you can know the will of God. And the greatest thing that, that is key in marriage is love. Praise the Lord. If you don't love somebody, don't marry the person. Are you getting me? If you don't love somebody, don't do what? Marry the person. So the greatest thing you must look for in any marriage relationship you want to go into should be what? Love. And please, ensure that follow what the church is saying. The church have a reason. Uh, just like one of our, our leader was saying that what an old man sees lying down, a little child, even if he climb a tree, he will not be able to what? To see it. We have seen a lot of people that play games. The church will not stop you. Praise the Lord. The church will not what? Will not stop you. But in most cases, those marriages end up having problems. I don't know if I'll be able to help you. Uh, thank you very much. And then please, before I leave, I might not ask, answer any other question again, but I just want to talk about this issue of parenting. Let us understand that I think you can go since I'm true with you. In Exodus 20, verse 12, the Bible says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be what? Long. Is there, even if your father is a, is a crook, your father is a wicked man, the Bible says what? Honor him. That your days might be what? I belong. You see, all, all men are not the same. All parents are not the same. But you should be, you should make a difference. If your daddy says you are useless, does that make you to be useless? No. Eh? No. It doesn't make you to be useless. Let's say, ah, daddy, I'm not useless, though. I'm I'm very useful. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He said, but he said, Daddy, I'm going to surprise you in life. You know, don't use that. To hate your parents. There is no parent that hates his children. Do you understand? Some of them is just like our mommy said. They are upbringing. They don't have control over their tongue, their temper. And they do some things. But please, the Bible says we should honor them. And not only that. The Bible told the parent, said in Proverbs 22 verse 15. He said, foolishness. Is born in the heart of what? Of a child. As far as you are concerned, you are a child. True or false? True, sir. True or false? True. You are a child. So you should, when your parents do some things, we should not feel offended. That is where I'm going. Don't feel offended. Why did my father do this? Why, why did my mother talk to me like this? And all that. Don't feel offended. In most cases, go to them and explain to them. And if you explain, they don't understand. Go and pray. Don't hate your father for any reason. Don't hate your mother for any reason. He says, foolishness is born in the heart of a child. But what's the next thing there? The rod. Rod, rod, rod is painful. Some parents, their rod is their mouth. True or false? Their rod is what? Is their mouth. Because if you are not doing well, it's your parent they will. True or false? If you are not doing well, say, your father did train you well. True or false? They say, your father did train you well. So parents will do everything in order to protect their children, in order to help their children. Like uh, our pastor was saying, that some parents are even, they even brag about their children. Say, my, my son is the... That is the reason why some parents will say, come, you must read medicine. No? You must what? Read medicine. One of the reasons is because they want that their children to be medical doctor and good people in life. And there is no father that doesn't want his child to progress. Because many parents believe that when they get older, the children will do what? Take care of them. Praise the Lord. Even though I, told par I tell parents, don't depend on your children. Most especially in Nigeria. Nigeria condition is very bad. <laughs> because some people graduate, they finish school, they have no job. The job they are doing is 30,000 naira. 
If you depend on your, your children, that your children will come and help you, is it thirty thousand dollars to take take care of themselves, their children, and you? But you know, because of all these things, that is the reason why parents do everything to make sure that you, as a child, you become a good person in life. So you don't need to hate your parents. In fact, the Bible says in Proverbs twenty-three, verse uh, seven. Okay, verse ten, verse thirteen. Withhold not correction from what? From the child. For if thou beatest him. So if your parent is beating you, you shouldn't look at it as if, uh, you know, the, the, the man hate me. But there's a level, an age you get to your parent should not what? Should not beat you. But what I'm trying to say in, say in essence is this. That we should not in any way hate our parent. Whatever they are doing is for our good. If you are not happy about it, pray about it. Meet them as our leaders have said. Tell them that please, in this area, in this area, I am not happy. But don't hate your parents. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> yes, last question, please. Okay, praise the Lord. I had a lot of questions, but through the question I answered, they've answered almost all. So I'll just give like two questions. Okay, very quickly, briefly, so that we can wrap up. Praise the Lord. Our speaker was talking about living a godly lifestyle among our generation. And I have a problem because when I was in secondary school, when I was writing my final exams, that is why there was a time my teacher I was teaching. Okay, we were writing an exam, and then the teacher came. He wanted to help us, so he said that this is the answer. Just like you are writing an exam, and you say number one, A, number two, B. And he was telling us the exams, the answer to the exam in the exam hall. So as a Christian now, I could not copy or do what he, the teacher was doing. I could not follow those examples he was doing, so I just wrote my exam. But the problem was after the exams, after he finished giving us those answers, the invigilator just came and said, submit. So now me that I refused to cheat with other people, I was at a disadvantage because I was trying to stop myself from cheating and listening to them. But the, the invigilator just felt since they have told us the answer, we should submit. So I prayed a prayer during my neck and then God helped us that no lecturer, no teacher, sorry, comes to tell us answer. But my problem now was that I wanted reporting the teacher to the authorities. But the problem I was having was that I'm a Christian. Not everybody in the hall was a Christian. So if I'm reporting the teacher now, I'm doing it for just myself. Will Other people will try to say, why is this boy doing like this? Will it affect the other students? Or am I just supposed to do my work and forget about the teacher? Praise God. Okay, that's your question. Okay. Then the second question I'm having is about the marriage. Marriage. The, the, our speaker has answered part of it. Yeah. But you say that a person can have genuine love for a sister and then he, he goes to the marriage committee and then he says, I have genuine love for this sister. So my question was that can a person have genuine love for somebody outside and go after the person? And if yes, you can have genuine love and go for the person outside. Outside where? Outside this building? Okay, outside. outside. <laughs> Wait, say outside. Outside my house? Outside, outside the church. Uh -huh, okay. Because me personally, I want to marry somebody in the church. I know that the person has the same doctrine and background like me. But if you are going out of the church now are you right as a christian to just go out of the church and then you have genuine love for the sister and then you you bring the sister in and say you are proposing you are bringing the sister to the marriage committee for them to say this is the sister my heart goes after praise god all right so i uh, will stop we will stop there let's appreciate okay so um We'll wrap up at this point. Uh, we'll just get the answers. So I think we'll take you first, if you don't mind, the first question, and maybe our mommy will talk on the second question briefly. Hallelujah. Now, concerning the first question, uh, I, for you, first of all, I would like to commend you. I would like us to clap for that, brother. And, uh, a little girl in JS3 
did that kind of thing. And then the teacher came and saw what she was doing and said, no, it's A. Remove it. She looked at him and she cleaned and wrote the A. As soon as he walked away, she said that is not right. She erased what she did and did what she shared it before. And after everything, she reported to her mother that this is what happened. And this teacher was trying to help her. And from what we have been taught in this school, it's wrong. And so, somehow, the mother was talking to the owner of the school and mentioned it. She didn't call the name of the teacher. But the owner of the school was able to discern. And when she was talking to her staff, she said, whatever you do to destroy a destiny today will catch up with you tomorrow. For the children you help today will become doctors tomorrow that will destroy you. The children you help today to pass exams will become the engineers that will build houses that will collapse on you. And she went on to talk. The teacher resigned on his own. And he brought his child to that school. What am I trying to say in essence? It might not be comfortable to live as a child of God in this kind of world. But if you remain steadfast, Jesus will single you out. Mm. I want you to know this. Life might delay you. I'm trying to say about the outcome. He might not have done well in the exam because of the circumstances. But hear me, everything works together for your good. That exam, you might fail it. But know that God will orchestrate something for you. Mm. Because you represented Jesus in that exam. And that is the beauty of our testimony. That when we come to talk, we are able to tell people the real truth about our lives. Some parents can't tell the truth about their lives. Some people can't tell. Mommy just said that she was a rough girl. And I started by telling you that I didn't live a good life when we started. It was not easy. Some of us gave our we were prayer points to our parents. But somehow, before they left this world, they thanked God for the day they gave back to us. And so I want you to know this, that it might not be good at the beginning, but if you stand for Jesus at all times, there's no way he will not single you out. At the time of glory, Jesus is truly the one that glorifies. And the Bible says, those that he justifies, he will glorify. So the end of that kind of story is your glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If God gives you the anointing, you can go outside later and meet the teacher. Say, what you did is wrong. As a child of God, I'm telling you, you can give your life to Christ. The person will not crucify you. <laughs> to answer the question on marriage, God deal with us according to our level of relationship with him. If you are in the low floor, he deal with you as a floor member. If you are on the higher one, if you are the middle one, he will deal with you as a middle member. And if you are in the inner, inner, inner one, he handles you as inner, inner, inner one. So ask yourself, where level I deal with God? That is why knowing the will of God in, in marriage, how you can know it cannot be determined by anybody. It is you and God. If you are so close to God, he can use every method to talk to you. But if you are just a primary level, you can use just one. But me, I'm not in primary level because I'm anointed servant of God. He talked to me through, even before the man came to where I am, God told me, a man will come from a far place. And it's true. He came from a far place. When he came, as I entered church, I heard the voice. That was in the dream. That was, was in the dream, the first one, that he would come from a far place. The second one, I was in the church. He entered. I heard the voice. This is the man I've told you. I say, hey. I kept quiet. The other one, we were in the prayer room. I was praying, oh God, that I may know your way. That I may know your way. I went in a trance. And all what I'm seeing is that two of us praying that we may know your way, that we may do your 
be the same prayer I went up. Then I want to tell you that a lot of things God used to confirm it. Even when I do not understand his life. How many of you know my husband here? Mm -hmm. My husband is not the type of person that laughs, that smiles. He's an anointed servant of God. His holiness unto the Lord. And I am, a, and I as an individual, ah, I'm already everybody, friend to everybody. Aboking Koa. Ko? To. I have to start crying, God. I can't cope. I can't. No, I can't do it. You know what happened? I left the church. I was not coming to church so that they won't ask me to minister on the public because. I feel say that man, God, that one will be your way for me. We know, we know blend. I they laugh, I they talk. That that man no allow me live as I want. So I was running away. I was not singing. But you know what happened? We went to minister conference in Lagos. Then they have not destroyed that building. That building, the uh, the restaurant there. I was there, and I heard the voice. When I went there, I just went like a backslider. I went to that conference as a backslider. But it was me, Jesus used to minister to preach. He said, All of you have backslided. You are just here. You have gone far. Say, Pastor Nami, I've been number one. I am the one. It was after that prayer, God now said, I will still confirm to you that I am the one speaking. As I was standing there, I heard the voice. The man will pass, and this is what he will do. You should know I'm the one. And he threw through, he passed. And he did exactly as God told me. I said, God, that will be done. But give me, he not told me one word. He said, my grace is sufficient unto you. And that was what the key I used into that marriage. And I want to tell you up to today, what I'm enjoying in my marriage is by grace. And the grace is sufficient unto me. We are saying marry in the church. It's because we felt that if you are with somebody, you are eating pounded yam together. It will take the same period of time for it to digest, for you to work on it. But if you are eating pounded yam, you went and meet somebody eating indomie. By the time her own finished digesting, she will react. Okay? Is it not true? So, but if you are eating the same meal, it will help you to have the same time of digestion and to also react on what you have heard. But we are not against you. By the grace of God, we have been wedding people from outside. But we are still telling you that the level of your spiritual life with God is what will determine what you will have. There is another thing. Somebody say, if you say truly you are in the will of God and you marry in the will of God, why is your marriage having problem? There is no perfect marriage. You work it out. But the problem we may have, and I want to talk to my youth sisters, is that, you know, they teach us submission in the church. And that submission does not allow us to express ourselves. Anything the man says, we just say, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Express yourself. If there's anything you don't la like in an individual at the early stage, Set to it. Take care of it. And we should be teachable and adaptable. Be what? Teachable. Adaptable. Teachable in the sense that your weakness, your partner can help you to strengthen it. Adaptation in the sense that you will accept it with all joy. With this short note of mine, I pray God will help us. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm happy for you people. I was thinking, you know, youths, when they are hungry, they can even tell you.